All right. Well, we're going to get started. Um, and uh, there might be other people joining us, but welcome. Thank you for taking the time uh, of your schedules to be here uh, with us. And uh, I won't go into details in the introduction other than to say that that we have people from, uh, uh, we have some, uh, John joining us from Florida, Brian joining us from California, Bala uh, joining us from uh, uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and uh, Bob uh, from um, Seattle. And I think uh, Rob uh, Weigarter, our executive director, is going to be joining us anytime. But um, it is great to have you all, and Mike from Kentucky. So sorry that I uh, left you out there. And, and Rob, right here from our, the office next door. Welcome, Rob. Thank you. So why don't we start with prayer and um, move right into hearing uh, from Paolo some of, uh, about, about some of the things that uh, we have uh, mentioned that we will cover today. So let, let us pray. We thank you, O oh, loving and gracious God, for the uh, beauty of your love for us and the realization that that love uh, is not only real to us, but it's becoming real to so many people around the world. And um, even in days where there is much uh, upheaval, um, we turn to you as the source of our strength and our hope. And um, the, the one that uh, promises to make all things new. Uh, we're grateful for the ways in which you're building your church um, from people of every tribe, tongue, and uh, language and nation. And uh, we're grateful that you call us to be part of that. And we pray that you bless our time together, our conversation, and that you make this time uh, a time that might be um, uh, fruitful for the uh, building of your kingdom and um, and also in ways that might expand um, not only our vision but also our commitment uh, deep in our commitment to, to to you and to your work we give you thanks and we pray all these in the strong name of Jesus amen amen, amen. wonderful well uh, once again welcome everyone and um, I have the privilege of having with me uh, Paolo, Reverend Paulo Feniman. Paulo is a pastor of the Independent Presbyterian Church of Brazil, um, fellow Presbyterian pastor, and also uh, a leader uh, in, in the Brazilian mission movement, particularly uh, in uh, uh, the, um, uh, an association called the Association of uh, uh, Transcultural Missions uh, of Brazil. And also, he's the executive director of the uh, Africa England Mission South America. So, um, Paulo, what a treat to have you. Thank you. Wonderful to be here with you. And, and, and uh, once again, welcome, everyone. I have um, Gwen with us. Um, where are you joining us from, Gwen? It's all right. <laughs> I mean to put you on the spot there, but uh, I just wanted to identify a new uh, participant among us. And and I we also have, in addition to um, our executive director that I had mentioned was going to join us anytime, uh, Rob Weingartner, uh, joining us from uh, our, the office next door. Uh, mm -hmm. Wonderful to have you. We have also Reverend James Auni, uh, who is um, uh, a pastor with the Presbyterian Church of Ghana in the... Um, uh, in the Upper Presbytery. Wonderful to have you, uh, Reverend Oni. I'm grateful to be part of this. Um, so, Paolo, let's uh, get right into our, our conversation. Um, how was your mission, how was your call to mission service? How, how did God call you to this, this place? Um, okay, so thank you for all to be participating on this uh, call. Um, that's happened when I was uh, 16 years old. Uh, in a mission conference in my local church, uh, talking and having some contact with some missionaries there, I felt a strong call from God to, to serve uh, specifically for uh, cross-cultural uh, ministries. 
that time was interesting sharing this with my pastor and basically his um, his reaction was, okay, that's great, that's good, but not for now. Uh, you need to have more experience here in our local church, and then we can consider in the future any kind of uh, ministry for you. So um, from 18 years old to 25 years old, I served in the local church in different ministries, uh, in some poor areas in Brazil, in church planning, uh, churches in, uh, in poor areas in my, in my city. And, and then in, two, uh, in 98, uh, I, 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 ha I had this uh, contact with Africa Inland Mission. Uh, they were uh, moving to my city in, uh, in Brazil. And um, I started this relationship, and for two years, I served as a volunteer. Um, my background is a graphic design. I, 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 I did the graphic design before. So they were looking to someone to help in this area, and I served for two years as a volunteer. But then in 2000, uh, my wife and I, we, we were praying and we decided to become uh, full-term missionaries with uh, AIM. Uh, we spent uh, three years uh, working with African descendants in, in Brazil. Uh, we we still with uh, some uh, small communities without uh, access to the gospel. And, uh, and for three years, we were working among them. We, we did evangelism, discipleship among these communities. And after that, for more three, two and a half or three years, uh, I came to be the director of media for African Mission in South America. And then um, 2005, um, the board invited me to be a director of mobilization for all South America. That's what I'm doing since that time. So mobilize uh, the Brazilian church in, in South American church to be engaged with uh, ministries uh, in Africa. Just, just Not just mobilizing people, but training people and sending people to serve especially in our rich people groups in, in Africa, and of course, among, nowadays, among the African diaspora. Mm -hmm. Well, at 16, right, is when you're aware of that mission conference? Yeah. I mean, Brazil is a youthful country altogether, but it seems to me that God is calling a lot of young people uh, to mission. Yep. Um, why and you yourself have been involved in a lot of, of that those efforts. Mm -hmm. But what do you think? I mean, young people are, are sensing God's call to mission so so frequently in in Brazil. Yeah, I I think part of this is uh, uh, the new approach with this new duration. Just telling them that they don't need to just abandon everything to be a missionary, but they can use what God is giving to them in terms of abilities, in terms of uh, studies, in terms of professional skills to serve uh, in, in, uh, in mission uh, fields. So, and nowadays we have a lot of people coming to say, okay, I'm a doctor and I want to serve God. How can I do that? And we are trying to help them uh, to use their abilities to, to serve. Uh, I think part of this new uh, um, new youth uh, uh, um, force coming to mission is because that we 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 are saying everyone can serve God with your abilities and w uh, with what God is giving to you in terms of skills. Uh, one of the example I was sharing with uh, Juan um, here before. A few years ago, I met a, a young guy with a 16 years old. That's very familiar for me because that was the same age. He came and said, I have a call for mission. I have no idea how to serve. But anyway, I want to, to do something. And my question for him was, okay, 
uh, what you really like to do. So what your abilities. So and he told me, I want to be IT guy. I want to be involved with uh, technologies. And for okay, so let's do that. Go to study, go to the university, get your best training in IT skills, and then you can come back and we can find a place for you. So he did, he got his degree in IT, and then he went to work with biggest uh, comp international company in Brazil. And after a few years, he came from, okay, now I have my degree, I have my, my experience in IT. Now you need to show me how can I use that uh, to serve God. And we found a place for him. We connect him with a group that are using technology to share the gospel. And he became a missionary and we sent him to Kenya. And nowadays he's uh, doing um, apps and create some technologies to, especially for uh, mission work in Arabic word and a Muslim contest. He just came with a creation in an app that's a kind of a game. If you have been, your cell phone is a game, but if you put some codes, it will be the Bible in Arabic. So in a contest of persecution, uh, this is uh, amazing. So we can provide Bible for Muslims uh, uh, seeking for Jesus without creating any problem in terms of persecution in their families or in their um, uh, communities. Um, and he's working on that. He's doing a lot of uh, stuff and helping missionaries to create technologies to, to share the gospel. And he's really involved with uh, Jesus Film Project providing equipment for uh, people in uh, remote areas to share uh, Jesus film in their own language in so many, many different ways. I think part of that is they are discovering that is um, different ways to serve um, with God is giving them in terms of ministry. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, I want to mention that um, we want to leave some room for questions, so feel free to please jot down your question um, in this kind of early part. I'm going to be the one asking the questions, but but uh, I want to make sure that uh, all of us, the, like within the, the one hour time frame, have the ability to um, to ask questions from. Well, one thing uh, well, that I, I had in mind was um, where where are uh, Brazilian missionaries serving? Um, and I mean, your particular area of focus is Africa. Um, you mentioned the uh, uh, African diaspora mm -hmm. um, and, and African communities within within Brazil and other countries. But what um, where where are most Brazilians feeling, feeling called to or serving? And then in your case, why Africa? Yeah. So uh, I will say that. Uh, Brazilian church has a heart for unrich people groups. Doesn't matter where these groups are. Um, we have a lot of missionaries now serving a lot of indigenous uh, groups in the uh, Amazon area, for example. We have a lot of uh, uh, missionaries serving uh, in the Amazon River with the communities uh, across the Amazon River. Uh, but also we have many missionaries going to Africa and also to Middle East, most in the Muslim contest. Uh, we have many, many uh, people going to Muslim contest nowadays. So it's not just, it's not one direction, but, uh, but uh, the sense is where we have unrich people groups uh, is a place where most of the Brazilian church and mi Brazilian missionaries are looking to serve. In our case, uh, Africa uh, uh, came, uh, it's a long history. It's about our passion for Africa for a long time. And, 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 and also because Africa nowadays, even, even the church in Africa is growing um, in amazing ways. We still with many places where no gospel. 
uh, we're talking about thousand uh, groups uh, in uh, people groups in Africa nowadays without the gospel. Uh, Twenty eight percent of the population, uh, three hundred million people uh, w without access to the to the gospel. So that that's why uh, 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 again is our heart is for unreached people groups. Africa is we we understand that God called us to serve there and uh, more in the North Africa East Coast uh, and Central Africa where is most of the unreached people groups are mm -hmm. the, the concept of unreached people groups uh, I mean it's understood differently by different people mm -hmm. so in your case or what is your sense that the Brazilian church um, understands as being an unreached people group or a group with no access to the gospel that you mentioned? Yeah, uh, basically uh, we use the concept conception that less than 2% of evangelicals. If you have a, ch a less than 2%, we're considering that group no uh, unrich. Um, doesn't mean that when they we have a two or more percent, they are rich out. We, we know that is not true, but, uh, and we still need to, to do something among them, but we consider an unrich uh, less than 2%. Uh, again, we, we are going for this place. We are doing church planning. We are doing uh, uh, discipleship. But we are doing also the uh, leadership training. So we want to see church planting this place uh, be able to reach out their own people or even different people's, uh, uh, um, people groups, uh, um, close them. So we work since the beginning with Pioneer uh, Ministries planting the church to arrive in the church that can send their own uh, missionaries. And you've seen, um, you mentioned some instances where you've seen, um, I'm, I'm sorry, um, uh, African churches send their, sending their own missionaries to other parts, uh, to other countries. Yeah, definitely, definitely. We have a huge African mission movement happening nowadays uh, in different countries, in different places. Uh, I just came a meeting from Kenya with uh, 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 one denomination there. They want to send more than 1,000 missionaries in the next 10 years. Um, and um, so our, our whole in this is uh, help them and, and, and to create some uh, capacity for them to do that. Mm -hmm. Even us in our own organization, we have a dream uh, until next year, uh, December next year, to send 400,000 missionaries, 400 missionaries, African missionaries, to different unreached people groups. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, you have places like Senegal, Ghana, uh, uh, Angola, Kenya, Uganda. That's a huge potential for send missionaries nowadays. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah, well, I, I agree with that. How do you, uh, outreach is big on, on uh, building the capacity of the church, and I heard you've mentioned that. Mm -hmm. um, how do you go about uh, coming alongside our sisters and brothers in, in Africa um, and building, uh, or, or being part of the building of, of, of the capacity for, for mission? Yeah, I, I think first is uh, create this um, vision for unrich people groups. Uh -huh. among the church. Uh, second is providing training for them. Uh, and when, when we're talking about training, we're talking about different uh, ways or models to do that. We have a lot of uh, formal training in the Bible uh, College Institute, but we're talking also about uh, informal training or, no, uh, or, or completely no formal training in the bush, with uh, just a small group of pastors there without any uh, 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 training before, uh, trying to, to help them to have a good theology, uh, passion for uh, mission work, 
And of course, we need to invest in structure for many of these uh, uh, churches and, 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 and people groups. And we support in the financial support for them. Uh, I believe that uh, African Church has capacity to support uh, their own missionaries. We have talked with some African leaders. They are saying that we have capacity to support. But the conception of support sometimes uh, is a personal support. It's not for projects. It's not for ministry expensive or any kind of other uh, needs. So in these areas, we are also, we are raising money to, to help them in all kind of a structure that they need. Um, MEKs and Missionary Kids uh, uh, Education, uh, even some evacuation uh, situation when we need to bring, uh, bring uh, take people uh, for health situation or even for persecution or any kind of uh, situation like that, we need to spend money to do that for them. Wonderful. Um, and, and last, last question on my part, and then we'll open it up for a conversation or a kind of wider conversation, but what are some of the ways in which um, churches and individuals in the U.S. Uh, can partner with the Brazilian mission movement? And uh, as you mentioned also with the African mission movement. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say prayer first. Uh, we, we believe that the prayer is the most powerful resource that we have nowadays. Uh, and, and working with mobilization, for example, I'm, I'm convinced that the prayer is the, the huge part of, or, or the, the most important part of uh, our mobilization work. Uh, I have been inviting uh, church across the globe to uh, stop what they're doing every single day, 10.02 uh, in the morning, just to pray Luke 10.2. Ask for the God of the harvest, send more workers for the harvest. Uh, prayer uh, definitely is uh, important. Secondly, I would say um, trying to understand and, and to know what's going on in this place. Uh, for many years, uh, Brazil uh, received a lot of uh, um, uh, outside uh, missionaries coming to Brazil to serve. I will say we still with some places in Brazil that uh, uh, missionaries from U.S., for, from different parts of the world, uh, they still needed. Uh, we still need some uh, missionaries in some places. But come to see what God is doing there. So many years ago, we were about 7,000 uh, cross-cultural missionaries. Nowadays, we are most than most, um, 16,000. Uh, that means the Brazilian church is growing fast and growing a lot in terms of mission involvement. And it's important to the, the church here, individuals here in America, to look what's going there and see how they can be part of that. That's basically what we are trying to do as Brazilians in Africa. We are not, not, we are not trying to arrive there and say, okay, we will do this and this and this, but we are trying to come alongside the, the, the African church and say, okay, where and how we can help you in what God, in, in what God is doing uh, among you. So it's amazing to see how many answers uh, we have from the African church nowadays. I think uh, listening and, 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 and working side by side with the Brazilian church, with the African church, uh, it's a great way to, to participate. And support, uh, financial support, I will say, this is, should be very specifically uh, uh, area. Um, as a Brazilian, I can, I can say, I don't want to see the Brazilian missionaries or Brazilian church or institution just uh, saying, okay, uh, we are open to receive your money, send all money as possible to here to us, because I think we need to also uh, be able to push the Brazilian church, even the African church, to support their own missionaries, their own projects. If we don't do that in the future, 
we will have a, ch a church and, and of course a missionaries uh, 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 that will be so dependent of outside help. And, and uh, for me, any help needs to come to create some mechanism to, uh, um, to help church and missionaries to be sustainable. So help the church to do their best to support their own missionaries. So if you can create this cultural in the African church and the Brazilian church, I think we'll be much better than just come and, and, and support financially uh, missionaries or, or projects. Hmm. Well, I think there's great wisdom there. Thank you, Paolo. And um, I'm sure there are other questions. Um, so let's open it up for other, other uh, questions that uh, you might have and uh, create this uh, uh, opportunity for dialogue. Paulo, this is Rob. I really appreciated the vision for church planning that you described or for um, evangelizing uh, among unreached peoples that didn't that, that seeks to engage the church in that context as well so that they can be strengthened for the work of evangelism that will continue when the missionary is gone. Um, can, you, can you say a word about the challenge that you face in seeking to engage churches in a region where you you are moving in to engage unreached people. Uh, I would guess that some churches are very open to that and some churches may even be resistant. Mm -hmm. it, you mean church in Africa? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so we are trying not to start any kind of uh, new uh, project or ministry in terms of church planning without any Africa input. That means all our teams nowadays, we are bringing Africans to be part of the teams. Uh, for that, we need to find uh, African partners uh, that we can uh, work with. Um, I, I was giving an example uh, a few minutes ago about uh, North Mozambique. Um, we, we send uh, three couples uh, to North Mozambique uh, to work in Pemba, to work uh, among the Muani people. It's a rich people group. Uh, just a few Christians in um, more than 150,000 uh, people living um, among the Muani people. And we sent three Brazilian couples to there, two couples from the Independent Presbyterian Church in Brazil. And, uh, but because we believe this African participation, we discovered that uh, very close, we have a Makua church. That's another people group, but with a strong uh, church among them. So we bring a couple and, and a few uh, missionaries from the Makua Church to be part of our, uh, uh, our team. Exactly because we want to see the African Church participating, but also because we know that for many reasons uh, we can need to fake the couples from there for health situation or, or, or MEK's education or any kind of uh, situation. So we are working with them because we know if we need to come out, they will be able to continue in the um, uh, discipleship, evangelism, and church planning among the morning people. So everywhere where we are going to start a pioneer uh, church planning ministry, we are looking for partners, African partners, not necessarily in that country or that uh, place. If they don't have anyone there, we will uh, seek for someone outside and bring them to be part of the team. So that's the model that we are using nowadays. That's very helpful. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello. Hey. Yes, I want to thank you very much for being part of this meeting. And I'm also grateful for the way Paolo has shared with us 
their ambition reaching out to Africans. I'm an African from Ghana, the northern part of Ghana, in the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, Pap Presbytery. We have a vast area of rich people. So after listening to Paolo, I'll be very grateful if we can partner with Paolo and their team so that we can reach our own rich people in the upper part of the country, I'll be much appreciated. So I want to appeal <clears throat> that we can, you can partner us, Presbyterian Church of Ghana, Upper Presbytery, so that we have a lot of our rich people, so we can also reach to them through your, uh, your program, the capacity building, the training, so that people can be empowered and equipped so we can reach people, establish churches for them. We have an area which is predominantly dominated by Muslims, mm. of which I think that if we get the support to go there, we'll be able to break through and we can save people for our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you very much. Mm. Yeah, um, thank you, Reverend Uni, and, and we will make sure, I will make sure that you both can connect and sure. perhaps uh, sure. talk to one another yeah. After this call, thank you, and, and I'm so so glad that you could yeah. join us for this. Just to, to mention it that um, West Africa historically um, were not place that we worked before, but we are uh, we are we realize that God's calling us to go to West Africa, uh, and anyway, we we are looking for. Um, start some ministry, especially among Muslim uh, groups in, in West Africa. It will be a blessing if we can partner with a Ghana Presbyterian Church and, and help in some ways to, to see this happen together. Yeah. Uh, we, we base it up most of our ministry in a partnership. That's what we want to do. So yes. it will be a pleasure. Thank you very much. You are grateful. Wonderful. I think we, we have a, a, a written question from Gwen. Um, Gwen writes, I was in Kenya this past summer. There are many Pentecostal churches. They include many testimonials during the service. Are you, are you Presbyterians or what denomination? Uh, in Kenya, we have a partnership with the Africa Inland Church. Uh, I will say uh, they're... they're Anglicans um, that were uh, with uh, we are working uh, nowadays. Uh, also, we have some no denomination mission agents uh, in in Kenya nowadays that we are trying to help them to mobilize their um, their missionaries or their members. But most of our partnership in Kenya nowadays is uh, with Africa Inland Church. That's the Anglican Church. Very good. Well, if, well, you think of all the questions, or I have, I have one. Uh, we know that you wrote a book recently, or uh, recently released a book called "From the uh, From Calling to the Field" or yep. something like that. Um, can you tell us? Well, we don't we don't have it in in, in English. Not yet. Uh, yeah. Can you give us the cliff notes of the book? <laughs> yeah, so in, in fact, this book existed before, uh, was wrote by uh, Pastor Oswaldo Prado, uh, also a member of uh, Independent Christian Church. He gave me this book uh, 20 years ago. Uh, he wrote the, the first edition of this book, and he gave me, and he told, that time he told me, uh, okay, you are starting your missionary career. Uh, this book will be so important for you. And, and really was uh, uh, very important for, for me, for my wife, and for our start, uh, our uh, first years. And the book talking about the relationship between uh, someone called for mission and uh, mission agents and the local church, and how these three parts should to work together to uh, see someone from the call for mission serving on field. So two years ago, I came to him, to Pastor Osvaldo, and I told him, hey, uh, we don't have more of this book. Uh, that was so important for me, for many other uh, Brazilians. 
what do you think about to reprint this book again and bring back to the church? And he told me, uh, okay, that's fine, but I want to implement or, or, or uh, bring more four or five chapels with a different uh, 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 subjects that I think is important now. So we need to update the book, but I don't have time to do that. Uh, if you can write about these things, uh, I will be happy to, to print again. So he invited me to do that. I wrote uh, four new chapters and, and uh, we reprint the book and now we, we are uh, promoting the book again. Uh, idea is help the, the church, individuals and mission agents uh, work together uh, to uh, improve the uh, mission force. Wonderful. Well, uh, I appreciate it. has been wonderful listening to you. We have, uh, we've had a conversation with someone who works with the Pakistani church, and they talked about how music, especially the Psalms, have created that kind of a safe place for those kind of conversations with uh, their Muslim, with the Muslim community. You spoke about the game and the app. Um, are there other avenues or venues other things that you guys have found that have been safe that kind of create a commonplace for introducing the scriptures or for introducing the gospel? Have you found kind of those places, like you spoke about that app that gives you that safe place to present present the gospel or the Bible? I mean. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I know much uh, new ideas in terms of technology, but w another, another way, uh, everywhere, and it's not just about Muslim Africans, but it's, uh, it's about anyone, anyone is looking for free internet nowadays. So you go to the airport, you're looking for a Wi-Fi connection, you are going to the cafe, you are looking for Wi-Fi. So uh, these guys, they have a small uh, device, is the size of the cell phone, and they create an internal um, Wi-Fi, but it's not for in, uh, outside internet access, it's internal access. So you can, you can go to Morocco, for example, and take a bus and turn on this in your bag or in, in any place, and people will see, oh, I have a free uh, Wi-Fi connection here. They will connect. But when they open their browser, it's not, you cannot access Google or anything. You will access Jesus film, stories about Jesus, uh, Bible verses, and all kind of uh, uh, gospel uh, material. Um, and you have a link. In the, you have a link say, if you want to know more about that, please contact us. And you have a contact there. So this is our helping to, to make relationship between some people that never will really be open to say, I want to know more about Jesus. They will never will say this in public. But through this material, they can make this... Uh, um, make this happen. Uh, this is another thing that we are using the Muslim contest that is helping a lot. But in the end, honestly, uh, I really believe the international ministry. I think uh, this technology helps, but in the end, we need to create a relationship with the Muslim people. Uh, I will say any, anything that can help uh, to create this relationship will be a, a good way to share, to share the gospel. Most of the wonderful stories that we have about Muslim coming to Christ, that, that is because they found someone, created this relationship with them, and, and during the process, they were open to, to, to listen to the gospel. Um, I have a uh, history about a um, young lady in uh, Horn, Africa. Uh, well, she, 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 uh, she is a Somali, one of the 
most hard uh, people groups to work nowadays in, in Africa. Uh, and she, she, was, she was a runner. And include she participated in one of the Olympic Games, I think was in Beijing. She was Muslim that time. And we sent an Argentinian missionary to work in Horn, Africa. And she also is a runner. And she started just a runner club for, mm -hmm. for girls. And we call Girls Run 2. Because normally just men can, boys can run and participate in this competition and recreate this project, Girls Run 2. That was a club just to sit together, training together, run together, and talk together. And when we create this environment for trusty, that means, okay, oh, I, I, she is really my friend. Even she is a Christian, she demonstrates that she is my friend and I can have this clear uh, or, or great uh, uh, relationship, she was open to come and say, hey, I, I want to know more about Jesus. So I heard that Jesus was a prophet, uh, but I also I heard many bad things about Jesus in, in the Quran and in Islam. Could you tell me your opinion about Jesus? And again, that, that was about relationship. It's open a huge avenue to share the gospel. Nowadays, she's a Christian and she's a missionary. So she's reaching this young lady, Muslim background, now is reaching another ladies um, in, in this uh, runner club, girls run too. So mm. I think relationship is the most important. Anything that can open opportunities for a relationship will be a blessing. That's great. Thank you for sharing that story. And and uh, I don't know, uh, Argentinians are really good runners, but I don't know about Brazilians, are they? Are they? <laughs> <laughs> but um, um, we're, we're pretty soccer. Okay, that's good. That's good. Um, one thing I can, uh, well, I wanted to, to hear you uh, mention a little bit more or share a little bit more about the, the diaspora. Um, how, how do you... Um, how do you go about uh, uh, standing with the, the people from African descent in different parts of the world and, uh, and um, kind of um, building their own capacity too and, and uh, the capacity of the congregations um, trying to reach out to their diverse neighborhoods? Yeah. Uh, so we never had in this story... Uh, 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 um all this movement happened. So 70 million people living outside their uh, original countries. Uh, and, and with Africans, it's not different. We have many, many Africans living in the US, Canada, Europe, uh, Brazil are receiving the many ones. And normally we have a three categories of diaspora people nowadays. We have the refugees, we have the uh, uh, laborers of people coming to work in, in comp international companies, and we have international students. So, and we are looking to work with all these three different groups. Uh, but uh, the difference between a, a reach out a people group in Africa, where is no church, is these people are coming place where there is church. Church is present in this place. So uh, that means we, are, we don't believe that we need to send a lot of missionaries to work among the diaspora, African diaspora uh, people groups, but we need to help the local church in this place be able to reach this uh, 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 African diaspora. So one of the examples uh, in Europe, for, um, in uh, Spain, for example, they are receiving many Libyans, they are receiving many Moroccans, um, and these people are coming for different reasons. Uh, they don't know Spanish, so we are open uh, a Spanish uh, language center for them to help them to learn Spanish, be able to find a job, start again their, with their families a new life in Spain. Where we are doing that, in the church contest, 
what kind of people we are taking for uh, uh, teach Spanish. People from our Spanish church in, in Spain, because they will be able, again, through the relationship, during the, the language training, to preach the gospel, to share the gospel. We are helping them to establish uh, in the country, help with the commit. Uh, uh, documentation, we are helping them with housing, uh, with different ways we are, we are trying to help them. Uh, that's happened in the UK with Somalis, uh, this has happened in France, in France with uh, Comorians, uh, uh, this is helping Brazil nowadays. We have uh, 20,000 Senegalese, Muslim Senegalese, living in south of Brazil. They came to work in this uh, huge uh, exporting meat company. Uh, this co Brazilian companies are preparing halal meat to export to Muslim uh, world. So we know that all these uh, uh, workers, they are Muslim because of that. So we are training church to welcome them. We are helping church to provide uh, some service for them language, uh, documents, and Brazilian uh, doc uh, documentation, and Brazilian uh, 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 bank account, all these small things, creating relationship with them and create opportunities to share the gospel. Oh, that's great. Well, thank you. Uh, that's, that's very helpful, and that is good work. Even at, among uh, places where we think, okay, the church doesn't need much help, uh, but uh, certainly, we can we can certainly use it uh, sure. yeah. in, in ways of uh, uh, as we try to reach out and and uh, be a blessing to our diverse community. So thank you. Yeah. yeah so uh, maybe we need to remember that cross cultural ministry nowadays doesn't mean to move from your own country. Mm -hmm. uh, people is everywhere. Uh, uh, and probably we have nowadays more opportunities to reach out some people group that we never had before. Mm -hmm. uh, probably will be so difficult to send uh, missionaries to Somalia, even Somaliland where things are a little bit better in terms of uh, persecution and uh, political situation. But we have nowadays 130,000 Somalis living in Canada. So how great opportunity the church has to reach out Somalis uh, outside Somalia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another example of that is that the largest community of Kurds in North America is right here in Nashville. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you have Middle East coming, we have Africa coming. Uh, even uh, we're talking about Venezuela nowadays, so it's so difficult to uh, to help the, the church in Venezuela or be in Venezuela nowadays. But we have a lot of uh, Venezuelans uh, coming to Brazil to here in U.S. from many different uh, parts of the world. So, yeah, uh, I I really believe. Uh, some people disagree with me, but I, re I really believe that's a God, God's movement. It's God's doing that. It's God bringing people to listen to the gospel. We are not able to go there. God is bringing them, close us to, to preach for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, just a quick question. Um, your, um, your reach out to diaspora is through the local churches where they are or uh, or uh, your own ministry or how what's your motto how do you do it how do you go about connecting for example a uh, uh, community here in the US yeah the I will say 95 percent is with the local church it's just in place where the church really doesn't want to be involved, we will do something alone. But that's something that we are not looking for. We want to have the local church involved. So we are seeking for a local church, able to participate, 
we training them, we give them some, some church has the desire to do something, but they doesn't have any idea how to do that. Like they don't know about the, the Islam, they don't know the, the, the uh, nothing about how to connect with a Muslim uh, a believer. Uh, so uh, uh, we are trying to help the church to do that. So we, we send some people from our own organization, but to, to be together at the local church. Bala, I believe you had a question. Yeah, uh, yeah I have a question in regards. Uh, so from what I uh, understand, um, um, you know, you, you're engaged in some mobilizing formation, right? Uh, and also uh, from, the press, from the Brazilian church uh, is engaged, uh, sending a lot of people to be engaged in mission. Uh, my question is, um, you know, I mean, the, what I found is that in the church in the United States, uh, less and less people are interested to engage in mission partly because uh, some people find mission um, in a negative, have some negative connotation to engage in mission because of colonial uh, uh, negative aspect of mission. So uh, my question is, uh, what, what strategies uh, that you um, or the Brazilian church uh, use to mobilize people to engage in mission and interested in, um, you know, mission is not only just a few people that are doing, but as a church. Um, I know, is, is there any strategies that the church in the United States can learn from the church in Brazil? Or... Uh, okay, I'll tell you a story that maybe can answer that. Um, five years ago, my conception about mobili mobilization changed comp completely. Uh, I was invited to facilitate uh, a gathering uh, between pastors and mission leaders for in the mission agents leaders and to see how they can be more close and work better. And, uh, and I started asking for the pastor, uh, okay, pastor, tell me um, what's the berries to to see your church more involved with mission. And he told me something that changed my mind that, uh, from that time. He told me, we are tired. We are tired from people like you coming here to ask money and taking our best people to send out. We don't want to do that. We want to partner with you. We want to be part of the mission, God's mission, not just to be providers. That was the word that he used. We don't want just to provide money, provide people for you. We want, be, we want to be part of the mission work. Okay, that's, that's a huge difference. Because I think uh, in, for many years, we were mobilizing individuals for mission, not the church. We were looking for individuals, families, in the, uh, uh, singles to go out. We changed that. Now we are looking for church. We are going to talk with the church and say, we want you on that. We have this project. We have this uh, place here, that place where we need someone. We want your church involved with that. It's not just about money. It's not just about uh, financial support, of course. Uh, um, so financial support and people, it's necessary for that, but it's not what we're looking for. We are looking for, for your church participate on that. So we switch the, the, the idea about mobilization. And then church start to come. Uh, 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 nowadays, I'm not looking for individuals. I have some uh, uh, needs, uh, uh, um, I have a group of pastors nowadays that I share with them every two months or a month. Okay, this is some of our uh, needs on field. And I have pastor calling me and say, hey, I have a couple that I, I want to send to this place here because they will fit exactly what you need there. And we want to support them also. And they are coming with us. They are participating in all. They are, they are doing member care with their missionaries. 
they are participating and, and every single day if we have any change they will be part of the discussion so we bring church together to do that that was different before when we they, we just received support or received the people and we did all things here and the church was in another side i think this is the the most important change for and you know i have i have situations nowadays that i never seen before i have churches calling at two hour offs and say hey we decide to support a missionary um, do you have any missionary that really needs su financial support that we can participate? i never seen this before. Church calling to the mission agent say, I want to support some missionaries. So basically it's about that. Uh, stop to look for individuals and go to look for the church, to bring the church. And sometimes this takes time. Most of the time, is a long process because you you have church that is really hard and uh, uh, they they were hurt in the process uh, for many different reasons. Uh, you have church that doesn't have a really strong mission vision for mission. You need to teach them and work with them. So I'm, I'm a chair of this uh, Brazilian Mission Association, and I'm telling for the mission leaders, hey, if you want the church to be involved with your project or your uh, mission work, you need, you need to work with them. You need to spend time with them. Maybe you need to teach them. It, this is a long process uh, in terms of relationship, in terms of teach them. I'm worried. Um, Five months ago, a uh, church in my uh, own city, uh, my home city uh, asked me, hey, we don't have any involvement with mission in our church, but we want to do that. But we don't, we don't have any idea how can we do that. So are you able to come, teach us, help us in, in this process, to mentor us in this process, to establish a mission board for our local church? Okay, so we started to do this five months ago. Just before to come to U.S. now, they came back and say, hey, uh, we will uh, start to support uh, two um, families. We don't know uh, how to do that. So could you help us to find projects to support? So I'm, I'm working with them to, to do that, but they will support two different families. And they established the third goal for them. Now we want to have our own missionary from our own congregation serving in mission. Could you help us to teach the church, to bring the church together? This is a long process to, to make the church involved involve in, in this. Uh, that's what's working in Brazil. It's, we are working with the church, not with individuals. Well, oh, that's, that's great. I'm afraid that time has... Um, um, gone out of our hands very quickly, but uh, what I'll ask to do, I'll, I'll ask Paulo if you'd like to type your email yep. address um, so that people can probably continue the conversation with you. Um, he, will, he will type his address, and uh, while he does that, um, I wanted to mention that the Outreach Foundation is um, preparing a trip for the month of October. And um, if you like more information about that, also visit our website at um, uh, theoutreachfoundation.org. The dates that we have are October 19th through 26th of 2020. And not only are we going to be able to visit, uh, I'm planning a brief visit to the Amazon where a lot of the missionaries, Brazilian missionaries are serving, um, but also, we, we will be part of a very exciting um, consultation um, in, of Presbyterians in mission of the four major Presbyterian denominations in Brazil. And then, uh, briefly, part, uh, we're going to be with the uh, Congress uh, for, of, of Brazilians yeah. in mission that is, um, gathers about 1,800 people. Yeah, every three years we have this Brazilian Mission Congress. Uh, next one will be October 2020. 
Uh, you are very welcome to, to, to see what God is doing in the Brazilian church, especially in terms of mission engagement. Wonderful. Well, thank you again, everyone. Um, and I'll, I think we should uh, wrap up uh, with prayer uh, for this world uh, and so many things that are happening in the world today. But if anybody has um, a, a particular prayer request, uh, we'll be glad to include it. And, um, I, and let's uh, then dismiss. And know that we do hold, uh, as the Outreach Foundation, uh, regularly Zoom calls to um, make these conversations uh, uh, available to, to other people. So um, like us, you know, if you find, uh, find us on Facebook or search us, You'll find more information, and we'll be glad to. Uh, we'll all, we usually uh, posting information there. And for those that are part of the cohort, know that uh, we will have another conversation, probably to debrief some more, and and uh, a cohort that I regularly get together with, and and uh, and continue other very fruitful conversations such as, such as this. Thank you. And um, any particular prayer requests as uh, we dismiss. <laughs> Well, and I'd ask that uh, you lift up our team in Iraq and also the, the people in uh, northern Syria who are coming under uh, such fire and, and violence. Yes. Thank you, Rob. Let us pray. Lord, we are in awe of you for the wonderful things you're doing and grateful for the opportunity that you have given us to interact, to hear from Paolo, and through him, um, from uh, so many uh, Brazilians and Africans that are eager to follow your steps and to pursue your way, your ways, um, uh, even if that when that requires sacrificial um, efforts uh, to go beyond themselves and, and share your love with others. Uh, thank you for the wonderful things you're doing, and thank you that you want the American church, a church in the United States to be involved in your work. Um, and so continue to give us wisdom on how to go about engaging other people um, in, in your will. And we pray for the team uh, of the Outreach Foundation that is right now in Iraq. Um, uh, we pray for Marilyn, we pray for Mark, for Jack, Baca, and um, for uh, Mike uh, uh, Kuhn and others that are there, be with them, protect them, um, and make them a blessing even in times of, of profound sadness. And we pray also uh, for the people of northern Syria that have been subject to such violence and that uh, are, uh, are just uh, uh, facing uh, tremendous losses um, in their midst. Be with them, um, comfort them, Give them your strength and reveal yourself to them, uh, even in these difficult times. And help us all here in the United States and elsewhere to be faithful to you, um, to your calling, and um, to the, those things that you want us to do uh, in our daily lives. Mm -hmm. Bless each and every one of us and continue to um, strengthen us uh, so that we might glorify you. We ask this in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. And God bless you. Thank you. God bless you, too.